Hey, welcome to the Red ba Red Barn series again. Uh, we're back with a brand new guest. Today's guest is the amazing uh, Sam Steffen, the man of lyrics. Um, just, I have nothing but unending uh, gratitude and amazement at this guy. Um, and it's hard to explain what he's doing. So I think what I'm going to do is just bring Sam on to sing his first song um, and let you decide what he's doing. Uh, his song, first song is called, I Ain't Even Had My Coffee Yet. So if you can start that up, we'll be golden. Go ahead, Sam. <laughs> Feathers all must The hay barn is burning And the milk's gone sour It's harvesting time But the whole crop's a bust And that's the third thunder strike I've heard in the half past hour I've been up for three days In a dripping cold sweat I called for the doc And they sent me a vet I'm losing my livelihood Along with a bet Hell, and I ain't even had my coffee yet. Well, the old ship's hit an iceberg and the radio's down. The captain's in the crow's nest trying to get drunk. Nero's fiddling, yelling, we're all gonna drown. Somebody send an SOS, we're sunk. Throw out your preservers, cast wide your nets, we're gonna need all the mother loving help we can get. I'm in the middle of nowhere and I'm all wet. Hell, and I ain't even had my coffee yet. That fella and his secretary taking a bath. A lady pulls up in her ex-husband's new Corvette. Right as the private eyes light his last cigarette, she says, "Are you ready?" He says, "We're all set." And I ain't even had my coffee yet. Well, productivity's down. Management doesn't know what the hell to do And union fellas, they won't surrender an inch And the strike ain't nowhere near to being through The thing to remember is that no one's gonna forget If it's a do or die matter I say let's every time I answer the phone It's a brand new threat And I ain't even had my coffee yet So marvelous. 
uh, I pick up my phone and it's a brand new threat. Holy cow. Oh, God. Oh, man. Sam. Where's my life? Sam, Sam, welcome. Welcome, Sam. Hey there, Good Bill. Good to see you again. Good to now, see you too, man. Oh, I got to let you know with some of the history. But first, that song, that song, I got to. Oh, damn. Listen. Yeah, you just struck me. You, you, the way you develop lines, like it's like every line you you write is is like a potential meme of some kind. It's um, you know, I, I that whole picture of the the threat of picking up the phone. You know, I was just thinking about all these phone calls we get, Sam. That uh, like eight o'clock in the morning seven o'clock at night and it's all people that sit there and tell you you this is your last t chance to take advantage or we, we've got this money set aside all you got to do is tell us your social security number and i'm like thinking why do they let these phone calls go through sam i mean they're obviously looking for people who are like marginally living in society who are susceptible to that the people that that are uh, too uh, they're just not intelligent enough to deal with threats like this and and we're letting these people get preyed on by by these phone call companies that are going to take all their money and and you, you know what kind of a society are we that we're letting these people getting robbed we're gonna, we're letting uh, uh, susceptible people be robbed <laughs> what the hell but we have a gun to, to make sure that everybody who's not susceptible is going to fight back so that's the story of life sam okay i've said my piece i want people to know what the hell's going on in your life what you're out in idaho right now where no one ref, no one wants to wear the banner for the sash of miss idaho uh that's my favorite joke about idaho yeah are, how's yeah. it been out there for you so far so good um yeah. yeah we moved out here back in back in october um my wife and i and uh you know with covid going on we haven't had a whole lot of opportunities to get out and about so i haven't been playing very much music out in the out in the real world but um but i'm hoping that you know as people get vaccinated and things start to reopen, that'll become uh, uh, something I will be doing. And I am glad to say that I have gotten vaccinated. So I'm looking forward to that happening sooner rather than later. I hope so too. Um, but it's good. Idaho is, is beautiful. It's a long way from uh, Bethlehem and Philadelphia where, mm. where I was living. Yeah. Um, uh, but yeah, you know, we're really close to the mountains. So every day we get to go hiking um, if we if we so choose. Um, and yeah, there's just not as many people out here. It's, uh, it's a little I bit different. I, under, I understand the sky looks a little bit different. A lot more stars in Idaho than there are in New Jersey and Pennsylvania. Yeah, I guess because there's less light pollution. Yeah, um, that's, that's right. And fewer so, people. Yeah, I think uh, I think most places in Idaho, it's like there's uh, like two or three people per square mile. Yeah, <laughs> so perfect. It's, That's perfect. It's a little bit different. And I think yeah. the other stat I heard is that uh, there's as many people who live in the state of Idaho as who live in the city of Philadelphia. Uh -huh. So, which is, you know, where I used to live. And uh, it's... So it's just like having more room. <laughs> but you know what, though, you got to be careful when you what you what you do in Idaho because they say every potato has a thousand eyes. Yeah, they do oh. say that. <laughs> okay, <laughs> well, God bless them. You yeah. know what, Sam? I think I hear another song coming on. What what song would you like us to do next? Um. Well, uh, yeah. If you want to play another one, um, so. Uh, well, let me just say something about that first song is, is that, so I okay. ain't even had my coffee yet. It's like my favorite kind of songs to write are songs that are just kind of, uh, that are sort of like talked more than sang. I've always been kind of self-conscious about my singing voice and 
uh, sort of growing up, never really um, enjoyed uh, singing, I don't know, events or like being forced to sing. Um, but one thing I like about folk music is that it's, you can kind of get away with just talking uh, sometimes is, you know, if you can play over what you're, over what you're talking. <laughs> Yes, uh, anybody can do it. <laughs> yes, that's why so, they call it folk music. That's right. That's you don't right. need special talents. You can't. That's right. You don't have to hit a C in the third, fourth register. You know. That's you, right. And yeah, yeah. You so just it's, tell uh, them the truth. That's all you got to do. Yeah, <laughs> it's for the the people who maybe aren't as confident in, in their talents. Um, folk music is is for you. <laughs> mm, that's right. Um, <laughs> That's perfect. Yeah. So, so anyway, that's a that's kind of a talking song. I do have songs where I'm like singing a little bit more, but that's more of a talking song. And this next one, uh, this other one I was gonna play is uh, it's called "Ain't No Friend of Mine," and uh, I can kind of tell a little bit of the story of it here if that's Go ahead, appropriate. Please. But um, yeah, so I used to live down in Nashville um, back in I think like. 20, 2011 to 2013 is when I was there. Um, and I used to, a friend, friend of mine and I used to go over to um, a bar that was right on Music Row, which is like where all the, the big um, music producer places are like, uh, um, what is it? Like ASCAP and- yep. um, We don't talk uh, about those the, guys. <laughs> yeah, okay, yeah, C censored. Yeah. Um, but they, uh, you know, they're all on Music Row and there was a bar there called Bobby's Idol Hour. And it was a really divey kind of place, really great. I think it's since closed down, um, but it like, then it reopened in a different location or something. Um, but anyway, it was kind of like a, a divey scene. And the bartender was like an amazing guitarist who kind of never really went the way of trying to get a record made or get produced. Um, he was kind of like, kind of like against against a lot of the Nashville culture that was all about like, oh, I'm trying to make it in the music world. Anyway, they they used to have an open mic there, and um, I used to go to it every week. And one week I was there, and this guy got up on stage, and he just started just started ranting um, about politics. Yep. Uh, and it got to where he, you know, he had a guitar, he had a guitar over his shoulder, and he was just like um you know ranting about this and that and finally they had to they were like dude if you're not going to play a song get off the stage and, right. and i don't think he ever did get around to playing a song they finally uh -huh. just pulled the plug on him and got him off stage but it gave me an idea for a song um and that's kind of what this uh ain't no friend of mine is about perfect so. younger man I traveled all through these here lands from up around the New England parts to down where the land called Mexico starts and in between there I visited a lot of places I shook a lot of hands I saw a lot of faces got pretty close to some things you wouldn't want to go near I heard some things I bet you wouldn't want to hear but of all the towns that I could recollect now there's one I remember being a little bit different somehow cause there was this man I don't guess you doubt it he did this thing well let me about it. it was a midsummer's evening, if I remember right. I was hunting up a place where I might stay the night. And I came on this crossroads about a quarter past seven. The only thing there is a hotel and a tavern. The door was open, there was a candle burning. I mean, it wasn't anything too fancy or nothing. But it looked like a place you might get a drink, have a spot to sit, and some time to think. So I go on in, I'm the only one there. Except for the bartender, of course, and two other guys there. And they was gruff old boys, you should have seen them. So I go on up, sit down in between them. I say, busy night? No one laughs. The bartender comes over, wiping a glass. He says, I've never seen you in here before. I said, well, that's because I've never been in here before. He says, well, where are you from? I said, nowhere special. He says, passing through, I ride on schedule. Well, we talked that way for a little while. Neither one of the other two fellas even cracking a smile. 
Finally, the bartender tells me I look thirsty. I say thanks, I ain't had a drink since Thursday. He pours me this beer. I thank him for the service. He says, you all right? You seem a little bit nervous. Well, I guess I must have been moving my eyes back and forth betwixt these two guys. I said, what's the story with these two here fellas? He says, well, let me tell you, the man to your right there is a righteous man. I trust him about as far as I can. He doesn't say much, of course, that ain't worth saying. But a word from him is a word worth saving. The man to your left's a whole other story. It belongs to his very own category. I don't guess there's much that man ain't said. Against friend or enemy, living or dead. And right when he said that, this bottle comes flying. Bartender ducks and breaks behind him. One of them threw it, I couldn't tell which. And then the other one called him an old dirty son of a you know what. So the bartender says, You want to see something really funny? I said, That depends. What will it cost me? He says, Nothing, just a minute of your time. I said, All right, well, that ought to be just fine. He says, Ask this fine, young, handsome gentleman. He's pointing to the guy standing right across from him. He says, Ask him to tell you about that other fella, the one there sitting there on the other side of you. So I said, Why? What for? What will happen? He says, Nothing, probably. And he starts laughing. I said, well, I don't get it. He says, I can see I'm boring you. Just don't try telling me that I didn't warn you. And then he walks off somewhere. So for a minute of pause, I just sit there thinking nobody's talking. So I started thinking, I mean, what in the heck could be so hilarious about these two fellas here? Come on, it can't be serious. So I'm drinking. And I'm feeling a buzz. I asked the man to my right what his name was. He says, I'm Jake. I said, Jake, who's your brother? He said, for that, you're going to have to ask my mother. I said, all right, and where's she? He says he doesn't know. He points down the bar, says, my brother might, though. I said, all right, well, this is getting exhausting. So I go up to his brother, and I practically accost him. I say, howdy, friend, put her there. Now, what can you tell me about that man down there? Well, he just grunts, turns his back. He's pouring these shots out, knocking them back. So I try again, always been persistent. He resists me again like he's all against it. Finally, the bartender calls out, no, you can't force it. I know he drinks it faster than he can pour it, but, well, you just let him finish that there swallow, and you'll see, he'll begin to holler. Sure enough, no sooner does he set down his glass. And he says, all right, I'll tell you. But just cause you asked, he's a no good, long haired, dirty, yellow, double crossing, son of a low down line, cheating, stealing, rank, smelling onion, peeling, lazy, inbred, foul mouthed, grass fed, ugly, useless, two bit, unread urine drinking, whistle blowing, story telling, feces throwing, draft dodging, muck raking, unamusing, ambulance chasing, money grubbing, mother loving, counterfeit. Good for nothing, unmannered, lame, bland, inconsiderate, stupid, selfish, weak, illiterate, helpless, hopeless, heartless, desperate. Hang on a minute now, I ain't done yet. Measly little sneaky, sniveling, treacherous, lecherous, daughter diddling, cold blooded, backstabbing, two faced, disgraced, carpet bagging. He's a unenlightened, foolish, misanthropic, uncreative, oafish, idiotic, brown nosing, boot licking, finger pointing, ass. Ass kissing, needy, greedy, angry, jealous, underhanded, sideways, overzealous, dishonest, careless, gross, disgusting, disgraceful, hateful, enemy trusting, beer belly, knock meat, sorry excuse for a cross eyed, hook nose, snaggle a tooth, pigeon livered, humpback, chicken hearted, don't even go getting me started. He's a genuine trash feed, lower than bottom dwelling, fun spoiling, trouser soiling, door to door insurance selling, bootlegging, egg laying, they say no pain, spit spray, belly aching. When breaking time, wasted, unreliable, ruthless, unrelenting, freeloading, freedom hating, not to mention he's a card carrying, proselytizing, sister marrying, fascist sympathizing, and he ain't no friend of mine. No, he ain't no friend of mine. He may be a one of a kind, but he ain't no friend of mine. He ain't no friend of mine. No, he ain't no 
friend of mine. He may be my brother, but he ain't no friend of mine. So there's that. Hey, thank you. Thank you very much. Wow. <laughs> So, so that was a that was a put down of the capital letters. I I I don't know. I I never saw anything like that before, and I'm not sure how to respond to it. <laughs> Thank you. All now right. the thing that people don't have, people don't know, is that you have all these songs memorized, and I have no idea how you do that. That's part of your art. Um, I've seen you do that song about 20 times now. <laughs> and every one of those put downs is all memorized. And I it I could never do that. <laughs> yeah. Well, it's uh, you know, that's the kind of song that once you play it out at a place that you play frequently, everybody just wants you to keep playing that song. I know, that's the They're song. Like, it's, play it's the, the one greatest. play the one about the curse words. <laughs> and there's uh, no curse words in it. That's the best part. Well, daughter did one is no, well shh, but we don't talk about that. That that we don't know. It could mean you just like to play Ring Around the Rosy. You know what I mean? Yeah. Well it's um you know memorizing a lot of that stuff is all about most there's rhymes in that song and and i think it, if the rhymes weren't there it would be a lot harder to memorize but, yeah that's you know right. because because it's like if you can remember one line um it triggers then it's the just rest kind of, of it. filling in the rest yeah it's like mnemonic yeah. mnemonic devices yep perfect. Um, and i think that's yeah i think that's true with most most of the songs i write are mm -hmm. kind of like rhyme uh they rhyme you know I, I think there's a lot of uh songwriters out there who have i've heard them talk about how like they feel limited when they have to you know write a song and and they have to make it rhyme uh-huh um but i actually think that's like that really helps that helps helps you sure helps you know where to go helps you mm -hmm. remember what you're right <laughs> remember right. what you're doing um there's a, there's a structure here exactly yeah Mm -hmm. yeah totally so i i find it kind of liberating to have have rhymes to rely on when i'm constructing a song because uh -huh. it's also like you know if you can think of a line and you and in the music you know that the next line has to rhyme with the end sound there's only four or five things usually you can do so it it sort of like narrows down um the possibility the infinite possibilities absolutely uh, so I think I find that helpful as a as a songwriter. Perfect, it's perfect. I uh, Sam, I I'm constantly amazed how you do this, and and your songs are all elegic. I I don't know how else to say it. You're, wow, what what do you do for inspiration? How do you start? How do you finish? How do you construct these mighty tomes of knowledge? <laughs> well yeah so i think like for that last song you know it uh most of them really do start with like an idea um or or a title um sort of like the the repeating thing i think like um ain't even had my coffee yet you know that line is like something that i've heard a lot of people say and it's mm -hmm. like a common saying um so i think trying to make songs out of like common sayings is something that i'm kind of interested in Mm -hmm. um and so like it, it like in that song it's like just trying to think of the situation that arrives at that like ain't even had my coffee yet um and trying to figure out how to how to put music to that in a way that makes it kind of sound natural mm -hmm. um and then in a song like uh ain't no friend of mine that's more of like a narrative uh it's you know it's a very simple repeating guitar part but it's a it's a story like there's no repeating mm -hmm. there's no chorus in that song there's no um you know lyric that it like returns to it's just kind of like remember how remember the steps of the story and you can mm -hmm. you can kind of retell it every time you perform it um but yeah i think like i don't know storytelling is something that i'm really interested in and uh i think i, I sort of started out writing as like a short story 
person and and I really like writing fiction. Um, but I think like I've gotten better at doing that since I've started writing songs because in fiction or when you're writing prose, you know, you can you can start describing a room and then suddenly you have five pages of talking about what a room looks like. Right. Uh, but it, but in songwriting, it's like you got to like get to the point <laughs> yeah. as quickly as possible a lot of times. So uh-huh. I think it's it's helped me like sharpen up like what am I trying to say what what's what's this about um I think songs are good for for that uh kind of like sharpening up your language and Uh, and condensing things you've got the best sense of humor I I I gotta tell you writing a joke into a song is a very dangerous thing because the joke becomes old quickly and and but your 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 jokes are never old to me you know you you've got a great touch with with the quality of your wordplay is right there now i hate to do this because it's always the kiss of death to compare anyone to bob dylan but your songs sometimes like he bob did a lot of the wordplay songs they were all his dream songs he had one called bob dylan's 115th dream he just he he was telling you i do this all the time you know but he did it in colorful language and and um but he he does three four chord patterns and he and he tells you a bunch of rhyming words that 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 are just uh imaginary horseplay and and um how can you can you tell me anything about beside Dylan who else affected your approach toward music who who could you name that you yeah have? it springs to mind right now well yeah I mean Bob Dylan is obviously like I love uh I love his music he's somebody who has really helped me like kind of studying his songwriting has like I think really helped my songwriting um but it's interesting like bringing up that song the 115th dream you know a lot of his a lot of what he was doing was using um, like people who came before him and sort of like borrowing their structures and just, and putting his own words to. It's an American tradition. Yeah. So that song, like that's a talk and blues song basically. Mm -hmm. Um, And, and that is a form that was kind of developed by Woody Guthrie, as far as I know. Mm -hmm. Uh, And the talk and blues is something that has been replicated by almost every folk singer out there, you Mm -hmm. know? Um, like Woody Guthrie wrote three or four songs that were quote unquote talking blues to the same structure. And then Bob mm-hmm. Dylan's like 115th dream talking world war three blues. He's got one about talking bear mountain yep. picnic. Yep. Um, <laughs> and each one of those, it's just like a couplet. It's, you know, a repeating couplet that he's doing the whole yeah. song, but he's telling a story mm-hmm. and then it sort of leaves this, there's a line that's unrhymed in that structure where he's kind of like able to like tell a joke or say something funny or, or profound um, in a lot of cases. And, and I, I didn't include it in today's um, lineup, but I've, I've got a couple talking blues songs. Um, But I think like just listening to other songwriters who are borrowing that structure sort of helps you realize that like, Oh, you know, I could, I could take this form and make it into something that I want to talk about. Exactly. Um, and yeah so like so bob dylan is one i also really like woody guthrie pete seeger's got some talking blues um phil oaks is somebody i i really enjoy listening to he's he's got a lot more like political songs um but i think he's been a real inspiration um and then yeah just like the whole folk uh era people you know like joan baez and Mm -hmm. um, i mean there's a lot of there's a lot of names. I also really like Towns Van Zant, and um, I think that earlier song um, uh, "Ain't No Friend of Mine." I was listening to a lot of Guy Clark. He's got a he's got a song called "Oh Yeah." Oh um, my God, he's un, he's unrecognized. He's yeah, kind of a, you know he's a he. People think of him as a pop singer, but he's he's really uh, a great folk singer. Yeah, you know, Guy Clark. This, this, a lot of what you're talking about here probably came over from Scotland or oh yeah, uh, Ireland somewhere. You know, this is this is 
what I used to think of as being in a bar, like a like, <laughs> you know, America. So much of American music was invented in a bar by a bunch of drunks, you know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And and like even if it's if it's black music, it was it was blues, you know, it was it was the rhyme scheme was you set you do two setups, you know, and and then you set you set up a situation, you repeat the situation, and then the third the third verse is to resolve the situation, you know. Uh, yeah. Buddy Waters and all those guys were doing all that stuff. That's a standard blues format. And yeah. and so, uh, but it's it's always been, it's always going to be, <laughs> you know. It's just it uh, <laughs> it gives you time to think about how how you want to resolve the situation by saying the second verse and, as the first verse again. So you have enough time to conjure up uh, uh, something else. So you can make up a song like this on the spot, and I've seen it done. Um, I. Uh, that. Yeah, there was a guy at the at the Wildflower named George Johnson that used to sit there and and sing a song about what you were wearing out in the audience. He'd sing a song to you, and then he'd sing a song to somebody else over there about how you looking funny, and your wife is pet, packing tapping you on her shoulder to leave, and 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 stuff like that. He would he, he would describe actual scenarios in the bar. And, yeah, and uh, and do it live. You know, you know, you didn't make this stuff up ahead of time. This was him telling you stuff, and in a song, and and you go, God, what a talent that is! Yeah, that's amazing. I yeah. I definitely am not that that clever or. Quick. I think I I've seen you do <laughs> stuff like that. Come on, uh, I've seen you <laughs> challenged already. I know you can do it, man. Uh, yeah. Uh, what other songs you want to do for us? Tell us again another one um well so there's another one i think we got on the list here called uh words 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 and this is actually this is a recording of me playing at the uh 2018 nerfa conference which is the northeast regional folk alliance um and i got to go to that with um with a friend of mine uh ian zolitor who runs the the folk show on wxpn Oh, out of good. out of Philadelphia. Wow. So <laughs> big time friends. Good for you. Yeah. So he he took me to Nerfa and I had never been. Um, but he like nominated me as like the every DJ at Nerfa gets to like pick a, a performer, I guess, in their area. Mm -hmm. So he nominated me and I went and played that wow. song. Congratulations. Um, yeah. So um I guess maybe that's all I need to say about it, but it's also kind of talking about Phil Oaks. It's um, it's a song that I that is more political, and um, and I I wrote it when I was reading I was reading a book, um, Howard Zinn's People's History of the United States, which kind of it's a history book that just kind of tells the story of American history from the perspective of the people who are most oppressed and, um well oppressed by the decisions of uh people in power right so it's kind of telling the other side of the other of side. a lot of the, a lot of the history that's about. in our history books right know? so um so yeah let's we can play that one Ninety two, Chris Columbus and his crew discovered folks are living in some islands to the west. Promised to be kind, then went and changed their minds, made most of them their slaves, and put the rest of them to death. If I didn't know any better, I'd suppose that the terms of his agreement just weren't heard, heard, heard. But it's getting late, how long you gonna wait before you admit that the promise was just words, words, words? Andrew Jackson did create a paper saying that the natives would receive their promised land made a reservation zone drove them into Oklahoma leaving Cherokee and Choctaw blood in the Mississippi sand if I didn't know any better I'd suppose that the lion simply couldn't have endured, endured, endured 
it's a getting late how long you gonna wait for you admit that the promise was just words 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 in 1864 trying to end a civil war mr lincoln signed a paper saying that all slaves should be freed soon as he let them go in came the old jim crow and the rest you know is history if i didn't know any better i suppose that the promise had only been deferred deferred, deferred. but it's getting late how long you gonna wait for you admit that the promise was just words 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 In 1954, in a case called Brown v. Board, the Supreme Court ruled public schools must integrate their kids. Took their time, of course, with getting it enforced. And before anything could happen, it was just like nothing ever did. If I didn't know any better, I suppose that the ruling was too good to have occurred, occurred, occurred. But it's getting late, how long you gonna wait? Or you admit that the promise was just words, words, words. 1982, Ronald Reagan tried and true, said he'd increase public safety and on crime he waged a war. For Reagan, being safe had to do with class and race. Most of the folks he rounded up were young and black and poor. If I didn't know any better, I suppose that the law was meant to keep us all secured, cured, cured. But it's getting late, how long you gonna wait for you admit that the promise was just words, words, words. In 1992, the war on crime and drugs just grew. Mr. Clinton said he had a plan and that it would be unfurled. Built prisons left and right, filled them practically overnight. Now the U.S. has more prisoners than any nation in the world. If I didn't know any better, I suppose that the lockdown was a bad dream that emerged, merged, merged. But it's getting late, how long you gonna wait? Or you admit that the lockdown was just words, words, words. In 2001, weapons of mass destruction were the excuse Mr. Bush used to reinvade Iraq. And though the nukes were never found, the country was torn down, and U.S. oil prices fell a little bit after that. If I didn't know any better, I suppose that the reason couldn't have been so absurd, absurd, absurd. But it's getting late, how long you gonna wait for you admit that the reason was just words, words, words. Now the verses of this song could go on and on and on. Lies my leaders told me are too numerous to name. But I'm a getting tired and my patience has expired. And as we move into the future, the song will stay the same. And if I didn't know any better, I'd suppose that one's government in all things should be just, just, just. But it's getting late. How long you gonna wait? Or you admit if it'll be just, it'll have to be up to us. Thank you. <laughs> wow. I got to applaud that myself. That was marvelous. Whoa. Yeah. Yeah, that's a that's the abridged version of that song. That was, yeah. Uh, there's some uh there's some other verses. The thing about playing at Nerfa is that when you're up on the stage there, that there's this big clock on <laughs> that oh, you're no. just looking at the whole time. And and uh as soon as that clock is up, they will they will yank you off stage. So I was cutting verses 
but there's oh, sucks. there's some other ones in there about Vietnam and uh-huh. uh, the the Hirosh- Hiroshima, you know, dropping the yep. the atomic bomb. Right, that's very center. important. You know, Sam, I know. <laughs> Oh God! You know, it'd be nice. It would be nice if you had the power to just say, "Hey, uh, I'm going to do my, my song, my song, my way." You know, but 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 you don't have that power. You don't have that power until you become a national recognized person. And yeah. until then, you got to kiss where they want and when they want it. You know, uh, unfortunately. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. But I mean, yeah. To go, I guess. Thinking about uh, other lessons I've learned from listening to Bob Dylan, you know, um, I, I read somewhere that when he, or maybe you told me this, Bill, uh, but when he was writing, um, what's the song, uh, like a Rolling Stone, he wrote like thirty verses or something. Yeah, yeah. Um, and I've heard th- I've heard that he does that with like a lot of his songs. And I've actually I've tried to do that. Like when I'm working on a song, I'll try to write way more verses than than are necessary. Right. Um, but as sometimes happens, you know, sometimes you wind up liking them so much that you just want to play all of them. You can't know? edit them out. Exactly. And then you have a nine minute song on your hands. Or a, right. Which a is total. Minute. As far as they're concerned, it's unsellable, pal. You have to leave. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. So. I have a, I have something I have to share with people. You've always worn some kind of a baseball cap, and I've always seen you have some kind of a pen underneath your cap. And and I know that inside the cap, you'd keep some paper and you'd write down all your <laughs> all your words, 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 and and when you had an idea, so. I'm spilling the beans, beans, beans on your words, 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 Sam. There you go. Yeah. That's how you, that's how you remember all of them, huh? Well, yeah. I I don't, I feel like, yeah, I, I was going through a period where I was doing that a lot. And now I've, I've just got a little notebook I keep in my pocket. Oh, you got so. a different technique. Okay. Yeah. Well, you know, like my hat blows off and then, you know, <laughs> no! all my papers no, go everywhere. Was- 30 days worth the words, words, words. Damn it. Yeah. So you got to gotta adjust to your environment. Did, did you ever write a song at night, like wake up with a song? Um, I definitely get ideas for things that way, but it r- very rarely, you know, like I've heard stories that, who was it? Um, uh, was it Mick Jagger who like, like yeah, Keith Richards wrote and Satisfaction just, that way. Yeah, wrote Satisfaction. Yeah. And they, became, they became millionaires from that one song. Yeah. And now I've heard they got to do it. They've been doing, they've been singing Satisfaction every night for 50 years. I imagine suing that, huh? Yeah, yeah. So I I don't have any illusions about uh, about how, I mean, every song that I've ever written has come from like sitting down and struggling and doing the puzzle of putting words together um i don't feel like things just come like divinely inspired or like completely formed and it's just a matter of oh i'm just writing down what the muses are telling me um but uh, that's not to say that that's not how other people do it uh i can't speak for anybody else but um but i yeah i get like a line or something or an idea and then and then it's really but but for me like i really do need to sit down and spend time by myself uh and it really does feel like doing a puzzle a lot of times like putting putting a a verse together or a chorus um because it's you know there's rhyme there's meter um and i think yeah so for me also i think like when i approach songwriting i try to i try to do it as if i've never written a song before um because i think I think once once you write a bunch of songs, it can start to feel like, oh, I've already rhymed like rock and stock or right. wh- whatever it is. Mm-hmm. Um, and then it starts to feel like, oh, I can't do that because I've already done it in this other song. But if you, but I think if you can kind of approach it as like, oh, this is the first time I've ever done this. Um, this is, you know, it only needs to be this song that I'm focusing on. Um, I think that's been a helpful way to like produce more, um, more material. 
then maybe I would feel uh, comfortable doing otherwise. I got so, a tough question for you, Sam. A tough yeah. question. If you were being sent to like a prison colony <laughs> and, and for the next 20 years, and you only had three things you could take with you, like uh, maybe like an album or a book or um, a play, what three pieces of works of art would you take to a prison colony to, that you could for the next 20 years? Oh, gosh. Um, that's a tough one. Sorry about that. Yeah. Um, I don't know. I think I'd probably take uh, some long books. <laughs> okay. Yeah. But, pass the okay. Time. but no, um, no specific authors. I'm, ta I'm talking about specific, wor specific works that you would like to go back to again and again. Yeah. That's what I'm talking about here. Yeah. So I think... For me, I mean, I, I have like, I really like writing and um, and I have a lot of favorite authors. I really like Kerman Melville, um, William Faulkner, Dostoevsky. Um, Dostoevsky, I tried reading him one time. Wow. <laughs> I, yeah. I got about two chapters in and I said, that's it. <laughs> yeah. I can't he, follow that guy at all. Go yeah. ahead. I mean, I really like longer those longer novels, um, I really enjoy kind of like getting lost in them and, and experiencing the world of a long novel. I okay. also really like um, David Foster Wallace uh, wrote, you know, Infinite Jest is like this enormous book, but I really, I really like it. I think it's uh, a great book. Um, a tremendous attention span. Jeez. Sam, I'm so proud of you. <laughs> well, yeah, it's uh, you're, you're like from the wrong generation. You know that, don't you? Yeah. Well, so this is the thing. It's like you know, if I could, I would be a novelist or like a, uh, you know, writer of great long books. But I think the thing I like about songs is that you can at least finish them in a reasonable amount of time. <laughs> you yeah, know, to write a novel, to. you gotta. You gotta spend ten years writing it. <laughs> then the venue has to close down at two o'clock, you know. <laughs> so you have to finish the song before two o'clock, okay? Exactly. Yeah. So I think uh, everybody uh, out. Yeah, <laughs> but I but I do see like there is a lot of uh, overlap between um, you know if if you know I really like prose and I like reading novels mm -hmm. and stuff, and I think that has informed my my songwriting quite a bit, and I also think you know there's a lot of it's like especially in folk music um there's some like overlap between stuff like that like uh woody guthrie has a song about um about tom Jode, which is kind of like a synopsis of the grapes of wrath and there's a story apparently when apparently when he wrote it uh john steinbeck heard the song and he was like damn this guy wrote this you know just as good as my book was and it's uh -huh. That's perfect. And it's a folk song. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so I don't know. I think there's stuff like that. And like I have a one of my compilations of music is called um, Failed Novels. And I kind of think of think of some of my songs as like, well, couldn't <laughs> couldn't didn't have the patience to write a whole book about this. So just turned it into a song. That's um, right. So I, I think there's some of that. It was a good idea when it started. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But I don't know. It'd be it'd be hard for me to pick just a couple people. You, yeah, I mean, okay. I, it was just it was just a rhetorical question, you know. Yeah, yeah. But I also I also think like, you know, having a Bible is is good. There's a lot of really good stories in there too. Oh yeah. Um, and I'm not I'm not a particularly religious person, but I do feel like uh, See, I differ with you. I think you are a particularly religious person. You just don't know it yet. Yeah. You don't. Well, know. that that could very well be. Um, yeah. But I do. Yeah, I have another collection of songs that's called uh, "Only Human," and those are all mostly songs that were inspired by uh, scripture passages or stories from the Bible. Um, My point. And I, I do feel like that's a rich, especially also in folk music, there's a tradition of, you know, turning kind of stories from the Bible into songs. Um, so I feel like I've also tried to kind of follow in those. You need to tell paths. us about your father. 
and how my father yeah well my, my dad is also a uh a songwriter um yeah. so i think he is probably maybe part of the reason i'm uh got into music in the first place Thank um you. Yeah, he raised me on the Beatles every, you know, every month. He would stand us in front of his Beatles calendar and he would quiz us on, all right, which one is this? <laughs> so, That's you know. great. Yeah. Okay. So they were uh, a real big part of my, you know, upbringing. Uh, uh, but he, yeah, but he's also the chaplain of Lehigh University. So he's, he's got a, um, a PhD in religious studies and ethics particularly mm -hmm. um yep. so he's kind of more on the the philosophical side of of religion uh, uh -huh. my mom is also a, a minister she's retired now but she was a See? practicing minister there you go before. my yeah. point entirely i rest my case your honor <laughs> yeah so i'm the i'm the son of son of uh two you and you ministers. you use absolutely no foul words in any of your music you know it's yeah, a refreshing, but it's a refreshing change. I'm not a lot of what's out there. You know that. Yeah. Yeah. You know? and, sure. and that in, in itself is an art, you know, and there's a whole thing about you can talk about really nasty things like Chuck Berry did that, you know, uh, a lot of the artists that came out. Uh, before the 80s after the at 70s and 80s things get cut raunchier and raunchier and they kept using the foulest lowest level words in in pop music and and big selling records and there didn't seem to be a bottom to it there there didn't seem to be any depth uh any way to stop it you know uh and but the the, the stuff with the strongest poetry, you know, is, was the stuff that they had to kind of cover <laughs> and find a new way to say things that were oh, painfully uh, um, covered by, by the word like F-U-C-K. You had to find a new way to say that word uh, with as much force and 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 without using that word you know uh, yeah so. yeah and i i do think like you know there are better ways to say to insult people <laughs> or to <laughs> or to say like screw you basically right exactly um, you know and, and, so listen i think it's time for you to deliver another one of your tomes um which is yeah. like a poem without really a long poem so tell us what song is your next one yeah so i i think this might be the last one we have um but i just mentioned a minute ago only human the uh uh song that is about like you know bible inspired uh songs so this is from that this is called only human <laughs> Maybe you're a little more discerning. The 
already know what I'm still learning. You extinguished what I've been burning a long, long time to know. But given the option between staying and moving, saying and doing, begging and choosing, I'll take whichever brings me quickest to ruin. I'm only human, you know. Destruction, the moment of goodbye, and nothing is happening but a faucet is leaking, and darkness is filling the sky. And you wanna know if tomorrow I'll still be here, right where you leave me, here in your door like this. And I wanna know if this isn't your clever way of telling me that my chance has been missed. So go to your brethren, return to your battlefield, take whatever strength you got left. Your cards are all showing, you've been holding them clumsily close to the wound at your chest. And perhaps you'll think less of me, but perhaps that's reality. You ought not to go building up myths. Sometimes the tools you invent to escape yourself are the chains you imprison it with. I believe it. Thank you very much. That's that right. Wonderful, Sam. That was just gorgeous. Yeah. Speaking of human, 
if a human wanted to talk to you, Sam, how do they how yeah. do they contact you? Where yeah. can, can where can we find your music? So all uh basically all the recorded music I have is up on my Bandcamp page. So you can go to www.samstefan, uh that's S A M S T E F F E N dot bandcamp dot com. Um and that'll bring up, I think I've got like uh i think i've got about a hundred songs up on there to be honest wow um so you can listen to those for free or you can buy them uh i would always appreciate that yeah um, sure. i also have a website um uh, my website is just www.samstefan again that's s-a-m-s-t-e-f-f-e-n.com um and on my website it's a little out of date but it's uh it also has links to music i think it'll link it to my yeah that's how you spell my name <laughs> i'm working a, here i'm working for that's you an old poster um <laughs> but yeah i also have um something else that's worth mentioning i think is my my brother will uh last year kind of put he made a podcast that that uh features a lot of my music in it oh good um and that you can get to again on my website or on my Bandcamp page um and that's a it's a it's like an eight episode thing that's sort of talking a little bit about my relationship with my brother um talks a lot about like a bike trip that I went on uh about 10 years ago um and yeah and it features a lot of a lot of recordings of my my songs so um i think it's a really well produced um okay representation of of my music uh so you can check that out that was my um, will stefan huh will stefan yep. what's what was the uh, an, uh, address again How well again you can, you can get to that on if you go to my website um okay. which is just www.samstefan.com uh right. there's a there's a thing on there that says will's podcast and you can Oh, you okay. Can access, Excellent. Access Excellent. the episodes that way. Well, I hope um, you, I hope you can put up the Red Barn series too up here on your website. Yeah, nice. I, I think I can. Like I can. Probably and get I the was, link. Go ahead. Yeah, I could probably get the link and put that up. Um, I also have a a YouTube <laughs> channel. So um, if you want to like check out the videos that you saw today, uh, people can people can go to YouTube and type my name in, and I think they'll probably come okay. up. Okay. Well, you know, we were given strict orders not to mention the name of Steve Jones, who's producing this, but I'm going to, like, hell with strict orders, you know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> but thank you, Steve. I want to acknowledge all the work you're doing. <laughs> and I love you, Stephen. <laughs> I... Anyway. Thank you very much, Bill. I'm, I'm wearing I'm wearing the biggest hat I own just for you, Steve. I know, and I mean I'm not gonna bring my I'm not gonna come in visually here because I want to scare anybody away. Okay. But, <laughs> but I just gotta tell you, Bill, that hat reminds me of the butter chiffon. <laughs> Imagine if Sam could put all his lyrics under this hat. Imagine what that would be like. He could get at least five more songs and he's got out. Right so. <laughs> That's right. You know, I it's just I I I just came in, I'm doing something else, and I looked at the hat and I heard dun da 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 it's, <laughs> it's the old chiffon commercial. <laughs> uh well, you know, we all in our life we all wear many hats. So there's one of them. <laughs> Well, I was idea. told, Bill, that you stopped wearing a golf hat. I'm telling you what. Yeah, where was so that? Back in the back of the with a nine iron. I mean, yeah, that's. <laughs> <How's> that? <laughs> there we go. <laughs> okay. I'm working here. I'm working for you, kids. Okay. Listen, I want to thank you all for tuning in to Rock in the Valley. And I want to thank uh, everybody that was associated with this, including the listener who actually took the time to sit through this. And uh, I thank you. I thank you. And you're all a valuable part of the face of the earth. Remember that, okay? Don't ever give up on that fact and, and think that you're not because you are. 
All right. Uh, I'm going to say goodbye. Sam, you want to deal us out of here with a hilarious song? <laughs> no, you don't have any more, do you? you I more. don't think I have any more. But Damn it. I, okay. I will just say thank you for, for having well, me on your show. This has well, been really I, great. Thank you, Sam. Thank you. And uh, I do have uh, this this song that I uh, that you're going to hear is our theme song was the song that I composed with a guy named the legendary Frank Zelazny on drums and me playing a synthesizer trying to say you are you. So if you can roll that for us now, mighty, <laughs> mighty Mr. Jones, something is happening. I don't know if I have that accessible. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you do. That's the theme. I gotta find it. All right, wait. No, no, no. You don't have to roll it now. You. Can... Oh, you mean roll? It, it'll be on the tape. Yeah. Yeah, okay. it's on the tape. It's a, it's the goodbye. Oh, that's the goodbye. Okay. Yeah, that's the, one more song here. You're going. You are you. Wah wah. Yeah. I mean, this is great. I mean, I'm gonna leave all this in because I think it's funny. No, no. <laughs> <laughs> No, no, just just you cut put, it where it's appropriate. Sam, we do. Another, you do have one more song. You put them all the shame is in here. I can close. Oh. Oh. I have one you more. You want to do that, Sam? I love that song. Dude, yeah, that's a song I wrote for Bill. So yeah, yep. Uh, well, let's introduce that. Let's cut it and and let me introduce it. Ready? Go ahead. So now I want to talk about the, one of the greatest moments of my life. The greatest moments of my life was when I was sitting at the Hookah Turka one night and Sam came up on stage. I put the mic up in front of him and I dialed him in on the dial so that he could sound half decent. And then I walked down and sat in a chair and he announced immediately, this is a song I just wrote and I'm dedicating it to Bill Madej. And then he started singing this song. And I was, I sat there in tears, Sam. I can't tell you how much that was a present to me because it was, it ranks up there with uh, my wife and I trying for the birth of our two children. Uh, and in, in terms of, my central nervous system just going into other forms of existence uh, because of this song. So do you have anything you want to say about it? Um, no, just that, yeah, it's a, it was a playing with words again. But it was a beautiful play. It was beautiful. It made me laugh. It made me cry. It was all there. Could you, could you play it for me now? Let's hit it. You crossed the black cat's path when you encountered me. Somebody should have said this here was a carnival. The only way out again is back to living room which you were just driven from on account of your destiny you with your vacant heart throwing your weight around just like you owned the joint or like you knew someone making your crass remarks into their fold-out smiles as all their watches chime and somewhere a sailor drowned tears like a jet stream sky raking your made-up face i caught a glimpse of you Inside the hallway mirror, you look like a vagabond, you look like a stolen wife. Ah, oh, what's the word for it? You look simply out of place. And as the hostess rolls, shouting her lover's name, crying for ornaments and for a tablecloth, I saw how you fell apart and gathered up yourself. You put them all to shame. In preparation to perform some kind of ritual The astronaut cleared his throat as if he would make a toast Then he restrained himself from the whole roll of plumber's tape I don't care what the Bible says Shouted the bathroom stall back at the minister Distributing sacraments out of a purse he stole Out of the pot 
parts of mint, pardoning pilferage, it's no extra charge at all, back at the ranch, meanwhile nobody moved a bone, the sheriff was flinging cards into a hangman's noose, the deputy watched her fly, buzzing around the room, drew back the velvet drapes, looked out at our parking cold, a fat lady stood and bell saluted the flag and sang, somewhere a child is born, somewhere a child dies, nobody looks at you, they don't think you're beautiful, but you put them all to shame. makes his rounds, handing out red balloons, asking for tickets please, saying please watch your step, producing a handkerchief, stripping with turpentine, peddling silverware, and stopping to smell the fumes, the emperor's crown's been caught over the mantelpiece, a bystander claimed it was made out of mistletoe, but only been gathering Politicians' wives and the grandsons of janitors. There was a pack of dogs, I think it was Sherlock Holmes, charging the drawbridge doors, blasting an overcoat. And you in your pleated skirt, looking so torn apart. How did your hair get wet? It's not even raining out. I could have kissed you then, you would have hated me. You put them all to shame. Weatherman prophecies, all bets are off this year, blaming technology. The postman has been delayed due to the hurricane. Just then some legs walked in in search of a centipede. The judge entered wig and all. Some people stood and cheered, others threw fruit at him. Others forget me not, his gavel was in his hand, his sword hanging by his side. His breath smelled of bubble gum. It was your corkscrew gaze meeting the tailspin frame That was the moment when I knew you were the one They were the best of theirs You were no match for them You put them all to shame You put them all to shame should have said this here was a carnival. The only way out again is back through the living room which you were just driven from on account of your destiny, on account of your destiny. Oh, Sam, Sam, Sam. I've been given many presents in my life, but none of them made me cry like this. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Well, 
you're uh you've always been someone who uh you know loves playing with words and uh so you appear in that song as lord alfred oh, thank you <laughs> making his rounds handing out red balloons okay thank you i wasn't sure how i fit in i was either that or the serpent wearing a vest i wasn't sure <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. but anyway oh man sam that was a beautiful present and i'll i'll be forever thankful I'm going to say goodbye to Sam Steffen, ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> and uh, hope I can recover for the rest of the day. <laughs> All right. And well, thank you, Sam. Thanks, thank you. Thanks for having thanks, me, Bill. Really thanks, appreciate thanks it. For, thanks, to, thanks to Idaho uh, for putting up with you, and uh, I, I wish all the best uh, to you and Jamil, and I hope you keep writing. Please. Will do. Stop. Don't stop. Please, Sam. We need you, man. Okay. God bless everyone.